Alright everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about when you should farm the crate dragon teams right when you should when you should start building those major teams for the crate dragon raid so we're going to kind of talk about this right get into how i recommend doing it you know kind of comparing that marrying it up to my farming guide that i put out for you all so um we're going to get into our video but first and foremost i want to thank my channel members again guys i really appreciate your support um you know this it's amazing to me how much this channel has continued to grow even when i'm not posting regularly so again Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're not a channel member and you're interested, link in the description. Otherwise, please just subscribe. That That is a great way to support this channel for free. That's all we need you to do is subscribe, leave your likes, and leave your comments. Let's get into our video, and let's talk about when to build these Crate Dragon Raid teams. So, Crate Dragon Raid is something I know a lot of p players are asking me, Hey, Phil, you know, when should I start building teams so that my guild can score more and more in the Crate Dragon Raid? And this is a great question. It's actually, it's a very good question to ask of like when to build these things because sometimes, you know, some of them, it's going to be very easy to get to like a Jabba the Hutt team, right? Whenever you farm Jabba, that's when you're going to get that team. But when do you get some of these other ones, right? Because they're not always straightforward. Obviously our King, even though we cannot use him in this crate dragon raid, he still deserves his time in the sun sitting on his lofty relic eight throne. Wampa, you may not be allowed in the crate raid, but you are always in our hearts. He's probably not allowed in the crate raid because he'd break it, but, you know, that's that. All right, so the first thing's first, right? I mean, these characters are, you know, part of that farming guide, right, are very early on. You know, you're going to get Boba Fett early, right? You're going to get Cad Bane early for Executor. You're going to get Best Gummer Mando. You're going to get OG Mando. So you're going to have some decent characters right off the bat that you're going to be able to use in the crate dragon raid, right? And all four of these characters have use. Right, and you can you know dance around with the leads to figure out which one's going to get you the most points. But you know they have their uses in the crate dragon raid. Those are the first couple characters you're going to be building. Now you know Jack, please, man, come on. I you know I really was hoping that when the when the videos died down, the cup love would die down, and it's only grew exponentially. So it's looking pretty bleak right now, guys. Um. Anyway, so then you've got like this Jedi Knight Revan team. Right, you know, your old Republic. And this is a solid, like, this is a nice, like, in-between, right? You know, if you're following along on the farming guide, right, you go and I tell you, hey, get your executor, right? And then you can kind of build this old Republic team. And the old Republic is so solid. You know, it's a solid team in the crate raid. Without much investment, you can do really well, right? I mean, a Relic 5 Revan was carrying me to 300,000 points every single time. So, for a lot of guilds, if you're scoring over 300,000 points, you're doing pretty well. That's the, I think you need an average of 340,000 to get to that like 17 million crate, which is the, you know, one that's like worth doing the crate raid for. So, you know, I think that Old Republic just get them to the point where they can start scoring decently well and you're going to be in good shape, right? You don't need to invest crazy relics into these guys. Just getting them into that gear 11, gear 12 range, you should be able to get that done um, without too much trouble, I would say, right? Um, so this is 100% a really nice in between again, you know, in between those projects, but it also just, you know, gives you that team to be able to say, Hey, I've got executor and I'm able to participate in the great dragon raid. A lot of guilds are going to be wanting you in there. All right. Then you've got to have that GL focus, right? You know, your first galactic legend, have your focus, get your hut cartel. The hut cartel is a great faction in this raid. There's a lot of really good uses for them. Obviously the Jabba team, um, this is my actual team that I use, <laughs> um, because I use some of the other, you know, bounty hunter or hut cartel characters in another team. This team here gets me the max score, you know, in tier five or tier four or whatever, basically every single time. This is a guaranteed 1.2 million for me. Um, maybe I have to do one or two battles if it's a bad day, but most of the time I'm getting it first time. Very, very easy to do. Um, just a solid, solid galactic legend. So then you've got Java, right? You've got like a, an old Republic team and now you've got, you know, with like a random mishmash of bounty hunters, right? So you've got some solid things there to do. Um, this is a point where you've got to start thinking, okay, I've got this stuff. Now, where do I go from here? What's the next step? And in my, you know, opinion, it's kind of like backing into Jawas. You're going to have a Relic 3 Jawa from doing Jabba the Hutt. And then the rest of these guys aren't hard to get. You're going to kind of accumulate them naturally. And it's one of those where like you get them to gear eight, maybe gear nine. It doesn't take a lot of investment to get them there. And they're just like a solid 300,000 point team. 
you know, you, it doesn't, again, it doesn't sound like a lot of galactic, pa like a lot of points to people until you recognize that that's 15 million. If your entire guild gets 300,000 with your Jawas, that is 15 million damage, right? Just from those guys alone. So now all of a sudden this, you know, one Relic 3 and a Gear 8 team getting you 300,000 doesn't sound that bad. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. The, yes, for you, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you get your entire guild to do something like that and you're doing significantly more damage, right? So just, you know, another thing to keep in mind, you want to back into these guys. You know, this is not something that you like, oh, I'm going to go build and get Relic all my job was. I'm not recommending that. I'm just recommending you kind of back into them that as you get these guys, you're going to put some little bit of gear into them and you're going to get a lot out of them in that crate raid. Now, the overtime here with your Mandalorians, this is a great example of like, you know, overtime, right? So Maul, he's locked in Proving Grounds behind 4 million galactic power. So it's a long way away for a lot of people. Um, Best Armor Mando, probably one you're going to have early because of Executor. So you'll get that relic. Um, you know, Candorous is one who, you know, once you start going after Darth Revan, you might have him gear 11, gear 12, um... You know, eventually he's a character that you'd like to see relic, but you probably wouldn't do it right away. Um, Bo Katan and Django are both requirements for Jedi Master Kenobi. So as you build Kenobi, right, you're going to get super close to this Mandalorian team. You're going to kind of start filling in those holds, and then boom, you're going to be able to get Maul. So that's why I say it's over time that, you know, as you're progressing in this game, this isn't so much of a backing into your Jawas, where like Jawas, you're just going to accumulate those shards and eventually be like, boom, I'm going to go do them. Whereas with Mandalorians, you kind of want to, my, the way I look at it, I would not be building Bo-Katan until you're ready to build Jedi Master Kenobi. I mean, Jango's a great bounty hunter, so he's well worth building, but I wouldn't necessarily be relicking him until you're going after Kenobi. Um, so yeah, this is one of those where over time you're going to get this team, get them to really good relic levels, and then you can maybe say, you know what, my Candorous and Maul, I'm going to invest a little bit and get a lot out of this team. This is a solid team for me. I've been scoring... You know, I know armor is better, but I've been scoring over a million damage with these guys. Pretty, you know, pretty okay with them now. I've kind of got that down pat. So I've been doing really well with these guys. I've been very pleased with the way that they've turned out. And again, you're going to have these mishmashes of teams. It's just about figuring out which one is going to get you the most damage over the, you know, with the least amount of work. And then finally, the last thing is your Tuscans. And this is another one where it's like back into some more. The difference here is that these guys really need a lot of, a lot more gear to, at least, I don't know if like I just need Tuscan and Warrior to maybe increase my gear level, but, or damage potential, but this is a team that I feel like needs a lot more gear for this raid, comparative to your Jawas where they're getting an easy 300, I just, I haven't quite got there with my Tuscans yet, um, but, you know, again, this is another back into, right? You're going to get two of them through requirements, Tuscan Shaman. Like, then you've got to be kind of intentional building the other two, at least right now. Um, but again, like, it's not a team that I would be rushing towards, right? This is a team that you, you know, slowly kind of accumulate this stuff over time. And that, there's a big reason why I say it's a back into is when I say back into, what I mean is that you're going to get to this point of, oh, wow, you know what? If I go farm Tuscan Warrior, I'm going to have all my Tuscans at seven star. And then I can really think about, you know, getting them ready for the crate raid. You know, it's the same thing with my Jawas. Like, I've stared at those guys and thought, man, I could throw some relics on them and get a super good territory war team, but I'm not willing to do that because, one, it's territory war, and two, because it's Jawas. Um, yeah, that's just a matter of fact. But again, that's when I recommend building the crate teams and how I would do it, right? The You know, you're going to build just a mishmash first, right? It's not, you're not going to have that solid A team right away. You've got to do the mishmash, Got to kind of work your way into it, and then you'll start slowly building in, you know, this Old Republic and Jabba teams as you're progressing those accounts. If you're following the Fat Phil, you know, farming guide, you know, you see that you'll kind of get some of those mishmash of characters, and then you're going to move into your, you know, finally getting a solid team, and then moving into the, you know, Hot Cartel and doing some really good stuff in the raid. That's when it kind of really opens up for me is when you know, you get this. Because then these other teams, I mean, Mandalorians, as good as they are, they're not one that you can really chase until you've got Maul at seven star. And for a lot of players, that's just not going to be an option because he's stuck in Proving Ground. So I don't know, guys, that's the video. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, smash that subscribe button, leave your likes, leave your comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. May the force be with you guys. Cheers.